Cairo, Seattle. It's time to get schooled with a professor, John Clayton. Welcome to Schooled with the Professor, and we are talking offensive line at a very appropriate time. There's been changes on the Seahawks as far as coaching on the offensive line. Coming up uh, in another week or so, Hall of Fame votes have five key offensive linemen that are going to be up there, including Kevin Mawai, Steve Hutchinson, along with Jerry Kramer being added as a senior candidate. And joining us on Schooled with the Professor is Howard Mudd, one of the packs of guy that I know somewhere down the line we're going to be talking about him as a, off- uh, as a Hall of Fame offensive line coach, a guy who played football, did a great job. Howard, thanks for joining us here on Schooled with the Professor. Well, thank you, John. It's nice to nice to. It's always nice to chat with you. Yeah, in fact, before we get started, too, again, I want to see how your book is doing. The view from the offensive line, according to NFL offensive linemen, and an uncommon coach. That book, I love that book because it took it right to the players. Let the players talk about offensive line, the great stories, and that. How's the book gone so far? Well, I how has it gone? I have the best part of it all is a comment like you're giving me right now. I. I really don't know anyone that has picked it up and started reading it that didn't enjoy it. And they, I really enjoyed being part of it. And it, because of the way it came about or the way it came, yeah, the way it came about, but the way it, it, it came out that this is about us. It's not about me. It's about us as a, as offensive linemen. And I, I just think it's, yeah, so it's, I've gotten good reception. Well, that's good, and it's a good book. I think everybody should go out and get it. It's a view of the offense from the O-line football, according to the NFL offensive lineman, and an uncommon coach. All right, let's talk about, first by, off, what you've way, been— I'm in, the uncommon coach. Oh, I, I know that. We all know that. It's like <laughs> one of the great legends in coaching because, I mean, you you did it in such a different way. I mean, on, honestly, it's like when I, when I think back— uh, you're kind of like the Don, and this this is saying this positive. The Don Cherry in hockey was so uh, unique. The yeah. styles and things that is, you were kind of like the Don Cherry of offensive line coaches. I guess I yeah, it's it's different. You know, I was different, and uh, as a coach, uh, I guess I'm. My wife says I'm different anyway, so that's okay. I can we can both live with that. So, well, what would you think go. would be the the the, the, the describe the difference? of what you would do compared to other offensive line coaches? Well, I, when I looked at the whole thing, I, I looked at it as stuff that we did in the backyard. When I was trying to, I was trying to, it, it's, it's more of a natural, I call it natural football. But I, when I started trying to figure things out, it was not, you know, some, maybe some regimented programmed uh, technique or, or, or drill to coach something. I just, well, you, uh, you know, we would go down to the, I'll give you the name. The name of the family was called Jan Koyak. They lived th- four doors from us and they had a bunch of kids. They had a, a base, a basketball hoop. Well, nobody was down there telling us all of the refinements of how to guard people in the basket. You just did it. And, you know, so when I started coaching, I, that's kind of my approach was, you know, just kind of do stuff. And I stumbled into a couple of things that I did as a player, my coach, Tiger Johnson embraced it and, and and said, "Yeah, keep doing it. It works." And so I, I kind of that's probably a thing that uh, you know stuff that I know works. And is it you know offensive linemen weren't supposed to keep both feet or, or hop and have both feet off the ground? Well, I I embrace it. Uh, they're not supposed to spin around. Well, and I looked at. My teammate, Jimmy Johnson, that was a great corner for 16 years, and when he got beat to the post, he just spun around and caught up with the guy. Well, I did the same thing. So there are things like that. It's just kind of different. And, uh, you know, when I, I wanted to get the job done rather than fit into some regimented role. Is And that's one of, I think, one of the things that happens. Here. Everybody wants to have the same way of doing things as opposed to coming up with unique things, which, of course, definitely as times change and the game change, that can get you in trouble. No question. I think so. Yeah. If you're not willing to look at it and do it, at, well, I, I've got a problem here. You know, the quarterback's getting hit all the time. Can't. It's easy to go and say, well, I don't have good enough players. Uh, that's... I think that's a, I think that's a, a cheap way of, of of answering the question. It doesn't really answer the question. It may be that you don't have very good players, but your job is to take whatever you've got and get the job done with them. 
I, you know, it might be you have to take the, you know, say, okay, well, when we call, we can't just drop back and throw. We've got to, we've got to keep more people in or whatever that might be because, but you know, what is your job is to protect the quarterback or your job is to make yards. Well, if you don't have good players, you can't just, what do you do? Surrender the year? I don't think so. I think you got to find, I guess my ego <laughs> If you will, it was you know it was like okay, well I'm going to find a way that this group of guys are going to get the job done anyway. And that's the one thing now that I think people don't recognize because you have a changing landscape, and that's why I would imagine that uh, had you continued coaching, it would work very well because you've got guys coming out of college, out of spread offenses, air raid offenses. You know, they just basically kind of stand up there like penguins, and they don't uh, have to get into the intricacies of getting their hands in the ground and trying to block. Well, I mean, uh, a lot of coaches are struggling with that. I had the occasion this year of looking, watching a lot of video because I, I was doing a, uh, a report for a couple of broadcast teams just watching the offensive line before the, and so I had a sh- occasion to watch a lot of video. And there are 10 or 12, unfortunately, that's it, the coaches that disting- distinguish themselves from others by gathering up a bunch of guys and saying, well, okay, I had a bunch of injuries. Well, that's all right. We're still going to go. And we're, we've got to get something done. And one of those coaches is here with the, with the Seattle Seahawks, Mike Solari. And he had, you know, some real problems there. Um, he had a, a guy named Flowers playing left tackle. Everybody hated him, thought he was, in fact, including me. I thought he was good. I thought he was a washout. And something happened. And he started playing very well toward the end of the this year. Well, it's coaching. I mean, you know, get a good coach and get them doing things the right way, and it shows up. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm reminded of another situation where I watched the Washington Redskins come to town here in Seattle, and they beat the Seahawks. They had second string left tackle, second string left guard, second string center, third string right guard, and the starting tackle. That's all they had. And they did things right. <laughs> they, you know, there was a uniformity in which they did them, and if the quarterback held the ball a long time, he wasn't going to succeed, but at least the initial part, they formed a nice pocket. They, you know, they ran the ball a little bit, but there was, it was coaching, I, you know. Bill Callahan, it's, he's a good coach. Yeah, in fact, I remember well, that game. About that. They, they went into yeah. the week, they had 11 healthy offensive linemen because Brandon Scherf had the, was really yeah. in uniform, but he wasn't going to be able to play because of a knee injury. I mean, it was one of the most incredible Correct. things I've seen. Right, and so you say, well, how does that happen? Well, you know, like Bill or Mike Solari, you know, they, you can't coach. You can't coach what you'd like to have. You have to coach what you do have. I mean, that's, you know, it sounds, you know, it's a haggard thing, but that's the truth. Um, and, you know, whether the guy came from a spread offense or he was standing on his head the year before, you got to get him doing what you need to get him doing. And, you know, and that's called coaching. Now, yeah, we have the collective bargaining agreement and everybody says that. Well, why then is it that you see uh, uh, there's a guy in San Francisco, uh, John Benton, and, and I sent him a text during the year how well he had taken a group of ragtags and made something out of them. And they played uniformly and played well all year. And uh, you know, I don't, that guy jumped out of nowhere and, you know, as a coach. And he wasn't complaining about whatever. He wasn't complaining because he didn't have this or didn't have that or. You know, the collect, I don't know, collective bargaining agreement. Somehow he figured out how to get those guys better each week. That, that um, you know, that happens. And, you know, um, you know, a good friend of mine is down in, down in with the Rams. I'm sorry to talk about, you know, the, the, the local team's competitors. But, you know, he took, um, he took a team, you know, there's Aaron Cromer is the offensive line coach down there. And they played very well together. And they put, they took, Andrew Whitworth, who was completely, totally finished at at uh, um, Cincinnati, they ran him out of town and taught him a little something different, a different again, a little different, and he goes to the Pro Bowl. I, I don't know. I just I'm I'm very impressed with those kinds of things that I see, and under impressed with the ones that don't play well.
what is so special about Mike Solari? Because again, I thought that that was a great hire by Pete Carroll. I did too. I thought that that was uh, Mike has. First of all, he was in San Francisco, and he learned from one of the iconic guys. He's he died, uh, Bob McKittrick. Okay, so now to say, well, does he pattern everything after Bob? No, but he learned from a real, you know, a real, a, 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 as I say, an iconic guy. Okay, then Mike, then where he's paraded around, and he went like he went to Kansas City, and they had this incredible running game that they they had, you know, where um, and Mike was there and what I don't know who designed it I'm assuming he did um Mike then goes to the Giants and they've got a problem you know they got a lot of problems there they they started guys that were just they weren't good at all and now did they set the world's record for offensive line play there well if you, if you knew who he had you'd say wow and is Mike, uh, you know, is he a real close friend of mine? No, we know each other, and, and I respect him. And everywhere he's been, the the line play is always, I use the word uniform. It's uniform in that people do similar things all all over the place, and it's good. It's it's uh, it, it produces good results based on the talent that he has. I mean, it's better than most people would have predicted that group would function at does that make sense it sure does because i know i was at the uh, the giant game the day that uh, uh their right guard pew ends up getting hurt and getting a back injury mm-hmm. and he was never the same after that and then finished the season on injured reserve you know he had taken a cfl right. center and brett jones replacing an injured center who was a pretty decent one and jones ended up playing Very better good. than richburg right right and how does that happen? Well, it happens. I'm not saying that, you know, he, that, that Mike, you know, you know, retooled someone's brain, but what he did was he gave somebody some guidelines of, of play. It's like the center position or taking pew and putting them out at tackle. And this is the best we've got. Okay. Now let's coach within that and, you know, give the guy some guidelines, some tools, support him. And then, you know, then let the guys, uh, you know, his, the player, let his sense of of pride and, you know, his in, enthusiasm and all that, let it flourish. And, you know, so, but it's got to start with some, some uniform techniques and fundamentals. Um, and I just, I like the way Mike does stuff. How do you think he'll handle think, the Seahawks offensive line once he starts getting a hold of it? Well, I don't know. I don't know how Mike does his room, so I can't tell you that. I just know that when I see him work with other other teams, the work that he's done with other teams, he's going to get those guys. It's going to be different, different than they've been coached to do. They're, you know, I think I'm not going to try to tell Mike how to coach his room, but I, I would think that he wants to build a culture there. A culture being. There's no one thinks that we can play. We they all think we're bad. Okay, well, let's learn some techniques and fundamentals and keep our mouth shut and and uh, and then prove people. Let's do it with our play, not with what other people say and all that kind of stuff. You know, and so they kind of climb into their little shell, and that's what happens. You you make some, you know, you 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 start having some success, and you know, if somebody starts saying something good about you, and just keeps. Continue to keep your mouth shut and just keep showing them with your play. Now, I, I don't know if that's the way Mike does it, but, you know, probably that's – I know that he's going to do techniques and they're all going to have the same techniques and he's going to be very demanding. And that's the part that uh, that is the mark of a good coach and, you know, that demanding of little bitty things, demanding of how how you do something, the technique that we use. Uh, that sort of thing. And, you know, in technique, in my opinion, and I think I would say that Mike does that too, you know, technique trumps talent all over the place when it comes to offensive line play. Curiously, in in looking at the offensive lines that you did around the league, I mean, is it pretty much all uh, zone blocking? I mean, very little man blocking. And if there's a man blocking team out there, where is it? Well, the offensive line, John, forever, 
Okay, forever. When I, I mean, I started in 1964. That's a long time ago. Um, Kramer was still his had already started playing. So, but you know, it's, well, if you look at if you look at any offensive line going way back to there, the function of the offensive line was playing together. You had a um, um, you had kind of a a little culture of your own within the team. You know, you had your own language, you know, your own techniques, you know, and some, there was a very unique thing to do. Well, I was part of a team. We were, uh, you know, that little team in San Francisco, and we were pretty good. We really did things well. Um, now, it was, so when you say zone blocking, and yeah, most people do that because it, 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 it cures a lot of the ills that defenses show up, the stunting and blitzing and things like that. But you still have to, within that zone, whether you're zone or man, you know, man blocking, there are some teams that play very well. You know, the like Washington Redskins, they have a couple of man schemes where they pull and they pull people around the corner, and so does, you know, so does uh, Pittsburgh at times. You know, they have, and they're very effective. The most common thing they do, though, is they fit together. They link themselves together in a zone concept, and then the the better ones, they know when to uh, they 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 know when to unlink and go to the next level, and that stuff is all, you know. That's it, there's a science to it. It isn't just simple where you say, well, you two guys go block those two guys. Well, okay. Well, where's the, you know, there's a bunch of things. Where's the point of attack? Okay, I got to leverage the point of attack. I have to leverage my man. I have to pay attention to what the defense is doing. If they stunt, I've got to, you know. So it goes on and on and on. Well, so you got to reduce some of that stuff as a coach. You reduce it down to simple terms, and you keep repeating those things over and over and over, and then pretty soon you start getting better at it. You know, you just do. You can't jump off the bandwagon and say, well, we're going to abandon now and try something different. I, I just think you keep repeating the same pattern over and over. Great education on the offensive line, and, of course, uh, get that book from the Uncommon Coach, Howard Mudd. Hey, thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're very welcome, John. And that does it for this week's podcast. In between episodes, you can follow me on Twitter at Clayton ESPN. If you enjoy these weekly one-on-one conversations, consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next time on Schooled with a Professor.